So thank you everyone for coming, especially the candidates for the management committee of the YWP steering committee. This is the first time that we are doing the online hustings, hustlings, and we think this is a great opportunity for the whole IWA community to get to know you better, and also that you can share uh, your perspectives and give a, um, a little bit of your um, experience to others on this. So just some of the house rules here, and also for everyone that is um, joining. Um, be polite, be respectful, uh, be present here through the meeting, engage fully with the discussions, feel free, for example, to add your comments in the chat, ask for any clarification on this, and please don't discriminate at all through the meeting. And this meeting is gonna be, is already being recorded and it's gonna be available on demand on our um, IWA Connect Plus with this presentation slides on this. Uh, feel free to post questions in the chat and introduce yourselves and share your social media in case um, you want to. And if you're not yeah, presenting, if you're not speaking, if you can post. please mute yourself uh, so you won't be affecting the other presentations and you can have your camera open or off uh, in case you um, feel comfortable with. And no need to share your screen because I will be the one sharing it. So for those who don't know me, I am Isabella Spindola. I work in IWA. I'm the senior officer responsible for the young water professionals and regulators. And I will be your host during the, the meeting today. And we have a really tight um, uh, agenda. Uh, so I will ask that all the, the speakers today that they keep like short and consistent the time of the time, especially so we can have more uh, discussions in the Q&A um, aspects of it. So for those that are uh, watching this recording later, this is how we structure the YWP uh, community within IWA. We have uh, at the national level, the country chapters and in the international level, we have the steering committee. And these this committee that we are running the elections of it, they are the ones that provide support for uh, IWA and, and provide guidance in terms of how we can engage and support young water professionals as part of our community on this. So they are a representative body of the IWA young water professional members. They work on a volunteer base um, and they, as I mentioned, they provide advice, they lead the YWP community, and they also provide um, regional uh, representation for our members, and they pursue opportunities for, uh, the, for IWA to contribute to our engagement. And they are elected every two years. So here in the photo, you can see the currently members of this committee, that their term is going to end. Uh, in our Congress uh, in Toronto in August. So uh, as part of the election process, we always have a nominations committee. They are the ones that uh, make sure that we follow all the standards and we have um, uh, a really transparent election process. So you can see the members here. Some of them, they are present here um, in this meeting today. In terms of the timeline, all this information is also available on our website. So we are um, currently in the period of, of voting. So I will explain uh, further how, we, how you can vote if you are an IWA, YWP member on this. And according to this timeline, uh, the new committee will be presented uh, in mid-June on this. So we have an online announcement and they are taking, um, they're starting their term in, in, in August during the IWA World Water Congress and exhibition in Toronto. Um, in terms of the positions, uh, we have chair, vice chair, secretary, um, and then two positions for strategic advisor, specialist group, chapter coordination, events and communication, and career building. And for uh, in terms of eligibility, the uh, IWA member with an active membership for at least one year, 35 years old or younger, uh, open election. So yes, you need to be young, but a professional and fulfill the criteria per role as stated in the guidance document. All this information, again, is available on our website on this. Now, a really important um, information is how you can vote. As I mentioned, 
the voting okay. is only for IWA, YWP members. So we are going to be checking all uh, memberships on this. So if you're not an IWA member, you can't vote. So uh, go to IWA Connect Plus, go to community page, and then check for the Young Water Professionals community. When you access the Young Water Professionals community, you just follow all the instructions that you, you can see here uh, flagged in, in the post on this. This uh, voting is all online and again, only for IWA, YWP members. This. So without further delay, I will uh, ask uh, Ashton and, and Chelsea to be on camera. As I'm sharing my screen, I can see you now. <laughs> so please be on camera on this. Um, they are the candidates that we have for uh, chair on it. And we have collected some questions uh, that were made from uh, the current chair of the wider Steering Committee, Jacob. Jacob is present here today. And we also collected some questions uh, from the, the nominations committee. And I have the questions here um, on the screen. And for all the candidates for the management committee, so chair, vice chair, and secretary, we share the, these questions before so they could prepare for it. So um, before we go into this, um, I would like Chelsea and Ashton to introduce um, yourselves. You have like five minutes each. I will stop sharing my screen so I can flag you both on, on camera. Okay? Yeah. So you want us to do our full five minutes now or just a quick intro first? You can go for five minutes. Okay. Okay. So we can start with uh, Chelsea and then we go to Ashton. So hi everyone, my name is Chelsea Hayward. I am a process engineer in Sydney, Australia, and I've been an active member of IWA for a number of years. I am a current member of the YWP steering committee in the career building role. I am also the chair of the new IWA Australia YWP committee, and I'm on the management committee for the specialist group on sustainability in the water sector. In the past few years, in addition to these committees, I have engaged with IWA in a number of ways, including helping to organize and facilitate forums, webinars, and a podcast episode, um, presenting in conference sessions and more. I'm also currently an IWA and Grunfoss Youth Action for SDG 6 fellow, advocating for a waterwise future and youth empowerment in the water sector. Through these roles and experiences, I have and continue to support members to build knowledge and skills and networks, engaging with global water issues. And I have developed an understanding of the challenges and opportunities for YWPs and the ways in which IWA can support their development. I'm a firm believer in the important role young people can play in the global water community to drive positive change towards a sustainable water future for all. This is a key motivator for me to put my name forward for the chair role on the YWP steering committee. I want to help empower YWPs to, and ensure their voices and perspectives are included in discussions and decision-making on global water matters. I know that IWA's YWP networks are very strong and I believe that as chair of the steering committee, I can support them to create meaningful impact. In the chair role, I would leverage my previous experience to lead and mentor the committee to develop and implement strategic activities for YWPs and be the best voice we can be for YWPs globally. It will be important to recognize that the committee will be a diverse group of individuals with various backgrounds, experiences, and skill sets. As chair, I would call on these different backgrounds to hear a range of perspectives and get a sense of what YWPs in different regions want and need. I would work with the committee in the early stages to identify the strengths within the group and discuss how we can leverage them through events and initiatives, making sure to get the most out of the committee so we can deliver good outcomes for the wider YWP community. Key to achieving good outcomes for YWPs is to actively engage and empower young people in the water sector. From my point of view, we can do this through capacity building and knowledge sharing, including intergenerational cooperation, hosting webinars, online get-togethers, forums, and conference sessions focused on professional development for YWPs are important because we need to help them feel like they have the knowledge and skills to make meaningful contributions to the sector. But then we need to go beyond that and ensure young people are included in industry-wide discussions and decision-making. 
This could be in the form of ensuring there are opportunities for YWPs to share their perspectives or including them in management committees for groups and events. I think that it is wonderful to have events by YWPs for YWPs and they are an important part of engaging the community. But we also need to make sure that, that, that YWPs are part of broader water sector events and initiatives too. When we look more specifically at YWP engagement in the IWA community, there are a number of ways I would like to promote more YWP involvement. The concrete and tangible initiatives I would like to drive forward and would be my biggest mission as chair include rolling out a mentoring program, which is something I was part of starting work on in the current committee and would like to see through. Looking at opportunities with the IW Secretariat and board to update the requirements for IWA branded events so that YWPs are included in the organizing committees and their speakers. Encouraging YWPs to get involved with IWA specialist groups, including hosting online events to raise awareness of the different groups and promote the benefits of getting involved. Raising awareness of YWPs and their activities among governing members and exploring opportunities for YWP chapters to be part of forming governing members. This would provide more opportunities for YWP perspectives to inform IWA's strategy. So to wrap up, I'm confident I can leverage my IWA experience, as well as my relationship building, leadership and communication skills to be a voice for the YWP community and ensure that their wants and needs are translated into IWA's strategic activities and initiatives. The value I would bring to the chair role include leadership and vision, providing leadership for the committee and guiding their efforts to empower YWPs to make meaningful contributions to the water sector, advocacy and representation, advocating for the interests and perspectives of YWPs on a global scale. This includes ensuring I listen to and understand the diverse perspectives of our YWP community and then be a voice for YWPs and represent those perspectives in industry forums and decision-making processes. And finally, visibility and recognition, raising the profile of YWPs within their association and the broader water community, showcasing YWP contributions and achievements and the immense potential for YWPs to make a difference in the sector. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chelsea. Um, Ashton? Um, yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Isabella. Um, yeah, Chelsea. <laughs> um, yeah, that was quite amazing. Um, it's good afternoon, good morning, good evening to you all, uh, young people. My name is Ashton Bofu. I am a senior consultant at uh, ID Utilities. Um, in terms of my academic background, I've got uh, a PhD uh, in chemical engineering, mainly focusing on the treatment of uh, industrial wastewaters uh, in the context of a circular bioeconomy. Um, yeah, so I've been involved uh, within IWA for the past eight years. I have been part of the South African uh, IWA or WWE chapter um, since 2015. Uh, where I served as part of uh, the provincial chapter, which is the Western Cape. I then moved on to serve as a vice chair uh, between 2018 uh, and 2020. Uh, then 2020 to 2022, I served as chair of the South African chapter. And then from 2022 to 2024, which is now I've been serving as the outgoing chair. And I also serve as uh, um, a board member of our governing uh, body within uh, Southern Africa, which is the Water Institute of Southern Africa. So yeah, I've got a number of leadership roles on a voluntary basis. I also volunteer as an ambassador um, for wet skills and also as an advisory board member for Invalis Environmentalship, which uh, focuses on um, uh, promoting entrepreneurship uh, uh, for young people. Um, yeah, this is uh, a, a dire, you know, area of uh, my, uh, where my passion lies, uh, particularly looking at uh, trying to create jobs for young people. We can't expect everyone in the water sector to be employed. So I think entrepreneurship is quite vital um, to create jobs. So that is why I've been very involved. And even on my day-to-day -day job, I work with technologies trying to, um, you know, um, uh, promote the adoption of sustainable technologies in this sector. I also serve as a advisory board member again for uh, the Deep University of Technology under the Chemical Engineering Department. I still um, very much involved in academia, you know, in terms of uh, reviewing, uh, being a supervisor and all sorts of things. So this is also another area that I'm passionate about trying to, you know, um, be in the interface of academia, you know, industry, uh, and also on the investment side of things. So 
I always challenge, you know, our professors and academic uh, individuals really to look into uh, bringing meaningful changes uh, in the water sector so that we can solve our different challenges, you know, with regards to SDG 6. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to delve much into what I will do and what I'll achieve. So as I've said, this is just more like a, a short background about myself. As I've said, I have a very, very deep passion um, to see uh, inclusivity uh, within the sector. And recently I've been uh, slowly transitioning into sanitation side of things and also looking into a wash uh, as a whole and, um, you know, um, promoting, um, you know, the participation of women and girls uh, in the water sector. So it's another area, you know, I know that it's very difficult to find uh, men advocating for women, but I'm one person that's not shy uh, to advocate for inclusivity and ensuring that our women are well represented, particularly in the low middle income countries. Um, so yeah, as part of the African, um, Southern African chapters, I've been also instrumental uh, you know, as vice chair, and even during my days as part of the uh, YWP South Africa chapter, uh, helping our neighboring countries within uh, Southern Africa to also uh, have their own chapters and also begin to, um, you know, um, play a role uh, in the water sector in Southern Africa. As you all know, I've been hit by uh, different climatic effects uh, in the last uh, decade. So it's really vital uh, that we have all hands on deck and ensure that everyone uh, plays uh, their role. So that's that's me in a nutshell. Uh, the reason why I applied, um, you know, to be part of the upcoming, uh, you know, term of the steering committee, um, I think there's a dire need, you know, to uh, work together jointly and to really begin, you know, to engage young people across the world. I see water, you know, as a, um, you know, a vehicle into promoting. Uh, sustainable development and socioeconomic, um, you know, development. So we cannot elevate poverty without in looking into our water crisis and water issues uh, across the globe. So I think we've got low participation of young people, as we can see in this call. Uh, I don't think the globe is represented here because it's only 22, 21 participants that we can see. So it does speak volumes in terms of, um, you know, the lack of participation from young people. So I just thought I would challenge myself uh, in the next two years, I've been working uh, supporting Jacob as the chair for this term, uh, trying really to recruit and get uh, Africa and uh, you know low middle income countries really involved in IWA matters. You know, I mean, my uh, colleague Chelsea has spoken about you know steering uh, committees, specialist groups, and things like that. So these are things that you know we're passionate about to see young people playing a role. So I currently serve as part of the anaerobic digestion uh, management committee uh, in in Africa and also smaller source development works uh, within IWA. So yeah, I'm passionate you know just to um, push and ensure that uh, young people step up and begin to play active roles. I mean, we want to create a future workforce that will be able to stand uh, and, you know, ensure that we reach our SDG 6. So yeah, that's that's been natural and a little bit about my passion and what I hope to, to achieve. Thank you, Isabella, and thanks to everyone. Thank you, Ashton. Let me just remove your spotlight here. Ashton, thank you for your contribution on this. So pay attention on time, let me share my screen here so in case you have any questions for ashton and, and chelsea you can already post on the chat we will have a q a session um by the end of this uh, meeting so feel free to to tag it and now i would like to invite the candidates for vice chairs to be on camera on this and uh, in terms of the, the order of presentation, I'd like to start with Natasha, then with Albert, Natalie, and, and then with Chelsea, if that's okay. And similar to what we did with the chairs, I shared some questions before to guide the, the presentation so they have the same guidance. Okay, so um, I'll stop sharing my screen. And Natasha, if, ah, yes, you're already on camera, perfect. Feel free to start, you have five minutes. All right, thanks Isabella. So good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are joining um, from. As has been mentioned, my name is Natasha Momba. I'm a Zambian young water professional working with the Sustainable Development Goal Center for Africa. 
Um, with the center, I work with stakeholders to support government departments, civil society, and academia to accelerate progress towards the achievement of the SDGs. Uh, more specifically, I offer technical support for design and implementation of initiatives and programs with a specific focus on SDG number six. Um, my background is in civil and environmental engineering. And uh, over the years, I've been involved in projects that involve improving the conditions for transparent planning and imp implementation processes for securing clean water, uh, proper sanitation services, and overall the improvement of skills development of personnel within the water sector. I'm also a member of IWA and co-founder and chair of the Young Water Professionals Zambian chapter. I am very passionate about empowering young people and helping them and helping them participate in accelerating action towards SDG number six. So as chair of the IWA YWP steering committee, I plan to support the incoming chair deliver their vision for the YWP community. Firstly, by contributing to the development of a more inclusive and diverse YWP strategy that promotes the involvement of young water professionals from minority backgrounds who may be marginalized due to their gender, their race, or any other uh, factors. And so I'm confident that um, embarking on this type of strategy will foster a more engaged and balanced membership that will empower young water professionals emerge as water leaders in their different countries and communities. In addition to this, as the vice chair, I will also be responsible for coordinating the activities of the subcommittees. And I believe to effectively carry this out, I plan to ensure that each subcommittee has a clear mandate of their goals and their timelines. This could also be termed as smart goals, so specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound um, goals, and ensuring that these are aligned with the overall vision of the IWA YWP community. I also believe that being transparent and being accountable are key to ensuring that activities that we have set out, that I have set out, um, are carried out effectively. And in light of this, I plan to put in place a system of regular communication with the incoming chair for updates and progress reports from the subcommittees. And this will ensure, this will also um, ensure that we are able to take note of the challenges that the committees are facing and any recommendations um, that they have brought forth for improvement. And so I'm confident that in doing all these things, I will be able to support the chair in delivering their vision, our vision for the YWP community. Currently, um, I, I, I do believe that there are three major challenges that young water professionals are currently experiencing now as a YWP within the Sub-Saharan region. Uh, my perspective um, will be based off of based on that. And I think the first challenge that YWPs are facing is uh, lack of education opportunities and lack of opportunities um, in specialized training with regards to um, the water sector. And this lack of uh, opportunities has the potential to hinder uh, their professional development and their capacity to contribute effectively. And so I think a lot of work still needs to be done, um, but we need to begin to advocate for more of these opportunities, but also linking young water professionals to these opportunities um, and particularly doing so within our country chapters so, so that these are able to reach our individual members. Secondly, I, I do believe that um, Another challenge that YWPs are facing is uh, job opportunities. The availability of job opportunities within the water sector is often very limited, and this makes it challenging for YWPs to find employment and just advance in their careers. 
And I think one of the ways that we can do this is to begin to lobby within our country chapters for uh, mandatory graduate trainee programs um, with utilities, with regulators, basically quasi-government institutions, and um, begin to take on board um, graduates and young water professionals who wish to get into the sector. Thirdly is access to funding and investments. Young water professionals often face financial constraints, um, so limited access to funding for their research projects and entrepreneurial ventures within the water sector. And as vice chair, this, this, this is one of the areas that I will strongly be lobbying for, um, in addition to the, the other two. Thank you, Natasha. Your time is up for this. And I would like to invite Albert to be on camera. Let me remove spotlight and Albert, you're muted. I'm sorry. That's now okay. it's good. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you here. My name is Albert Saltafai, and I'm a professional specializing in project management and water engineering. Uh, currently uh, serving as the head of the project section at Regional Water Company here in Kosovo. I oversee a strate strategic planning, budget management, and international collaboration. Uh, moreover, my commitment to the advancement of the water sector extends to my role as a member of board of the Association of Waterworks here in Kosovo and as a chair of the Young Water Professionals of Kosovo. Currently, we joined the IWA in the September of the last year. Uh, my educational background includes a master's degree in civil engineering with a specialization in the uh, uh, utility management, water safety planning, integrated water resource management, and digital skills enhancement. Uh, according to the question, uh, I will try to be as clear and short. Uh, in the position of, of the vice chair, my role is to support the chair in all aspects of management of the group of the steering committee. I believe the most important areas of focus uh, would include uh, continuous communication and coordination. So I need to maintain continuous communication regarding requests and activities, work and solution to, challenge, to challenges of the young water professionals. Only through ongoing communication, I can learn more about the chair vision. That ensures that my rule as per the specification is to support this vision. Since I'm a position of the chair of young water professionals of Kosovo, I can easily compare and sometimes I may need to be critical in this rule to push the chair towards to fulfill the plan and achieving the mission according to the vision of the group. The second is to support in document preparation. So I will support the chair along with the other committee members in preparing the work plan. And I will also strive to other documents based on the request of the young water professional community. Perhaps even drafting strategies to encourage the establishment of young water professionals in countries that are not part of IWA. So personally, I can engage in Southeastern Europe, specifically in Balkan, where I'm coming from, to assist in establishing IWA chapters. Of course, this can be certainly done with the chair's initiative to expand the young water professionals community which I believe can be easily achieved with dedication. The third one is the monitoring of work plan activities. So I will uh, monitor the progress of activities and based on this report to the chair on the uh, fulfillment of the plan and the achievements of objectives. According to coordination of subcommittees, as the coordinator of subcommittees, uh, sub I will ensure that all subcommittees uh, uh, activities aligned with chair's vision and action plan. So I will try to monitor the progress and take corrective measures when necessary. We need to adjust something. Regarding the second question about what challenges are most uh, significantly uh, impacting young water professionals, I will try to provide this answer uh, as clear as possible. Our young people always aim to solve financial and lifestyle problems as quickly as possible. Avoiding the challenges we assume 
during professional advancement. Therefore, our contribution uh, in the future as a steering committee, if we chose, is this is illusion should be present to reality and benefits of future, future generation in the new water sector in our society. Uh, opportunities for career advancement, ongoing development, access to information that can influence the advancement of young professionals must be very important. My experience in this direction as a chair of young water professionals is that uh, we need to communicate with young water professionals in that way that information reaches the recipient quickly. So in my uh, experience, sometimes you need to have a group in social media like WhatsApp and other stuff uh, in order to uh, get the information in time. Uh, according to the third question, the what regions may require more focus for engagement and empower, empowering youth? Uh, since the organization I have been leading for the past two years, I'm sorry that everything I'm based in my experience uh, is the most active young water professionals in the region uh, right now is uh, young water professionals group of kosovo and perhaps even beyond i have gone through several phases such a group consolidation integration advancement and finally success that we are a part of iwa reflecting on this it could be replicated in the countries of southeast europe the balkans uh, especially in uh, and countries in underdeveloped and developing countries, informing, consolidating, and, and advancing young, uh, young water professionals. So we need to create something similar in, uh, as our group in the region. Uh, Albert, sorry, but your time is up. Can you please conclude it? Yeah, okay. So my idea, uh, I just need a few seconds. The rule of young water professionals worldwide is increasing every day, which is mostly uh, 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 the, the, which is most evidenced by the personal part of the rise of young water professionals in uh, region. In the in uh, in last uh, in the last than two years, we have managed to increase uh, really uh, groups in uh, in our region that I believe that the rule in five years will be a space for young, pro, uh, young water professionals as it is today. But with trained seniors as well, we will strive to think deeper because now we must act to leave behind the young generation. We need to create policies and visions that we need to create for new people because that new people uh, will be us as the seniors and the new people will be uh, according to our path. In conclusion, I'm deeply committed to continue our journey of success to grow with the water sector. So together we can create opportunities to empower young professionals. Sorry, Isabella, thank you very much. That's okay, thank you, Albert and Natalie. Thanks very much. It's so weird not clapping after someone has just given a really great speech. It's, it's really weird. Uh, thanks very much. And thanks so much for having me along today just to chat with you all. Uh, so just to start off, I'm a native English speaker. So feel free to pop in the chat if I'm speaking too fast. Just let me know and I will slow down. I won't be offended um, because I realise that is something that I do. Um, so I wanted to start off with why am I passionate about um, the young water professionals. So when I first joined the water sector, it was straight after being in education. Um, you know, you're surrounded by people of your same age doing a really similar topic to you. And suddenly I was in this environment where everyone in my team was 15 years plus older than me. They had families. They had a lot of stuff going on sort of outside of work. They didn't really want to be hanging around me. Um, but I'd moved from a completely different area. I'd moved from Wales. Uh, to the other side of the country um, to pull that job. Um, so what I want to do in the roles that I do at the moment is provide a, a safe space to network with other people who are at a similar stage of your career as you, so that if you are in that environment where you're starting a new job and you're kind of by yourself and you don't really know anyone, then you've got a group of people who you can turn to and people who you can go and do social things with sort of outside of work as well. So that's why I'm really passionate about this space. Um, so I actually joined the IWA UK chapter committee in 2020 uh, and I'm chair of the YPN for the UK. 
Um, so what that means is what well, one of the big things that we do in the UK chapter every year is a conference, an IWA UK Young World Professional Conference. It's out now. The details on the website It is in the beautiful city of Manchester. So feel free to check it out on LinkedIn and maybe sign up. Um, so it's yeah, a young person's conference organised by young people for young people for the UK. We don't have another event like that uh, on that scale in the UK. Uh, so I normally recruit a whole group of volunteers every year, a full committee uh, to then organise the conference with me because the first year I ran it, I did it by myself. And that's delegation is a skill that I'm learning to to build. Um, but it's it's super important. So as vice chair, how would I help out the chair? Um, so I think three things I bring to the table. Um, one thing is my enthusiasm. So um, I'm really excited. Um, I'm happy to help out and muck in. Um, I work in innovation in my day job. Um, so I'm really used to not having any idea of what I'm doing, but giving it a go anyway, which I think is an important skill uh, to have in this place. Um, the second is that I'm super, super organized. So one thing I'm really working on in the moment, we have a lot of different professional bodies in the water space in the UK. Um, so I'm also a national co-chair with the Institute of Water, which is a really big competitor for us in the UK with the IWA. Um, so I've become chair of the, the young water professionals there, um, not, not to compete with the two roles, but to help us work together better so that the volunteers that I'm working with are um, doing like half the work, basically, but still targeting the same group of people. Um, so I think being super organized is really important as part of that. And the third one is I feel like, hopefully I am, I feel like I'm quite approachable. So I feel like if anyone's got any questions or would like help with anything, um, then I feel like people are welcome and normally quite okay coming up to me and asking me because if people don't know what they're doing, I, I normally don't either. So it's, that's absolutely fine. Um, so I think those are three key skills that I, that I bring to the table. In terms of what challenges I think are most gonna significantly impact young water professionals in future, I think one of them is the diversification of talents needed in the sector so it used to be that you had like a biology background or geography background and you could operate in the water space I think nowadays a lot of people are coming in with sort of like a technology background and a lot of knowledge of coding and I think actually today you've got to have a bit of both you've got to you've got to have diverse talents you've got to be a bit of a coder a bit of a geographer uh, to be able to get by and I think adapting to that can be a challenge and I think another another challenge is um, we're adopting technology super fast and I feel like young water professionals are really used to that so things like chat GBT AI are part of our day-to-day -day lives now I don't know about you but I write my CV with that sort of thing um, I feel the difficulty, the challenge there is adoption of technology on that same level at a senior level. So people like our managers, our managers, managers sort of getting on board with that and not being scared of that. So those are some of the challenges that I think are happening in this space at the moment. One of the reasons why I've applied uh, at the moment uh, this year for a start, having the confidence to do it. And secondly, on the run up to Glasgow uh, 2026, which is in the UK, uh, I'm really keen on getting the different bodies uh, together in the UK to work together and really make sure young people are front of mind for that event. So that's sort of why I've chosen this particular time to be to be applying for this. I feel like I'm very UK siloed in my thinking, which is natural, but you know, because of my background. Um, but I'd really like to understand more about the different chapters and your different challenges so please feel free to reach out to me and have a little meeting with me uh, virtually and sort of discuss what's going on in your area a little bit because I'd be really interested in, in lessons learned so that's been me thank you very much for listening to me today check out that conference link and feel free to set up a meeting with me just to tell me how you're doing things in your area thanks very much thank you Natalie um Chelsea thanks Isabella Hopefully my voice is going to make it through. Um, I will keep it short and sweet. I don't need to reintroduce myself, um, but do want to highlight my motivation for also putting that, my name forward for the vice chair role. Um, so you've heard about my drive to help empower YWPs and ensure their voices and perspectives are included in discussions and decision making on global water matters. So should I not be voted into the chair role, I'd like to be considered as vice chair as it is um, still an important leadership role in which I could also advocate for the YWP community and ensure they are engaged in the global water sector. So as vice chair, I would support the chair acting as an additional mentor for the committee and a supporting voice for the YWP community. I would also happily step into chair meetings and represent the committee if the chair was ever unavailable. I would ensure that I am actively involved in discussions and decision-making for the committee, adding my own perspectives and the perspectives of other YWPs. 
I also understand that the role includes coordinating the activities of the subcommittees. I do this uh, through being actively involved in setting goals for the committee and the subcommittees at the beginning of the term and then checking in with the subcommittees throughout and offering support where needed. That's, that could be in the form of um, reaching out to networks, helping with the delivery of events and initiatives and passing on communications to the YWP community. I would look to work with the chair to make sure that the committee's activities align with helping to address challenges that impact YWPs. So from my point of view, the key challenges for YWPs are unconscious biases, painting YWPs in a somewhat immature light, uh, difficulties in skills recognition, lack of trust and meaningful engagement of young people, and not enough space for young people in highest positions. This might sound a bit dire, but I do believe that there is a way forward and it is something that I would advocate for as vice chair. Um, so potential solutions include engaging with the IWA community and broader water industry to bring biases to attention and discuss ways we can overcome them, as well as showcasing the achievements of YWPs to show that we are a force to be reckoned with. Uh, finding in opportunities for intergenerational co collaboration as well, for example, through a mentoring program or two-way knowledge sharing webinars or forums. And I'm trying not to sound too much like a broken record here, but other solutions I mentioned earlier are also relevant, uh, including creating opportunities for YWPs to be actively involved in IWA activities through advocating for requirements in IWA branded events and engaging with governing members to highlight YWP achievements and activities and get them on board with su supporting strategic initiatives for YWPs. Uh, looking at the regions that may require more focus for engaging and empowering youth in the water sector, I think it's important to draw attention to regions that are not only underrepresented within IWA, but also within decision-making processes in the global water sector, particularly the global south. As vice chair, I would promote the exploration of alternative ways to include these regions, such as ensuring there is diversity in the timing of our events, ensuring there are recordings for people to catch on, on later, providing more online offerings as part of bigger events, which are typically in person, or, or potentially looking at scholarship opportunities for YWPs from these regions to attend those in-person events and looking at uh, delivering events in different languages as well, if possible. I wanna make sure, uh, help make sure that there is diversity in the YWP community so that we can hear from lots of different perspectives. It's something that would benefit the entire association and lead to a future where YWPs are making more positive contributions to the sector. I think in five years from now, I see more YWPs embedded in all areas of IWA, playing an important role in decision-making and leading the drive for a sustainable water future. YWPs will also be crucial for the sustainability of the sector, inspiring the next generation of diverse water professionals coming through. I want to be part of advancing young people in the water industry and believe that I can contribute to this through the vice chair role. I'm confident I can leverage my IWA experience and leadership skills to be an effective leader on the YWP steering committee, supporting the chair and the rest of the committee to deliver good outcomes for the wider YWP community. And that's all from me, my voice made it through. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea. So let me just accept here because we have Hyatt coming. Okay, perfect. So let me share my screen here. So now that we concluded with the, the vice chair, I would like to invite Claudia and George to be on camera if they're able to. Uh, and then we can start with Claudia. Uh, hi, Isabella, if it's okay, I would prefer to have my video off just so I don't anger the internet gods. That's okay. <laughs> okay, perfect, thank you so much. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Claudia Bren. I'm Ecuadorian and Brazilian. I'm a civil engineer. I have a master's in hydraulic engineering and water resources management. I'm sorry if my voice is a little raspy. It's like six something here. So that's the reason. <laughs> uh, I don't smoke, so don't worry. But <clears throat> um, I was working at the IDB, the Inter-American Development Bank, for about three years. But right now I'm starting a PhD in Canada uh, in hydrology. So as you can see from my background, I'm normally the person in the middle of two groups. <laughs> so I think that's kind of one of the reasons that I, I decided to apply to the secretary role 
because I think this vision is important when dealing with communication in diverse groups. Uh, I did my master's, for instance, in a double degree program that was in Singapore and the Netherlands. And you're always exposed to these different ways of thinking and different ways of communicating. So I think I could be helpful there. And regarding uh, strategies for communication, internal communication uh, of the steering committee. Oh, sorry. Before I start with that one, I'm also part of the current steering committee <laughs> as uh, as the liaison with the with the working groups. So the specialist groups. Uh, so I've seen how the the present steering committee works and how we communicate. And although I feel it. Uh, Ines has been doing a has been doing a great job. Uh, every steering committee is going to be different, so we will probably need to adapt to the next one and see what works. And regarding the strategies, I feel the one to one communication is unmatched. So having these clear channels for people to communicate, especially with the secretary that is kind of responsible for <laughs> making sure that everybody's heard. Um, I think that that would be my main strategy, but also being conscious of different time zones, be, uh, being conscious of different uh, technology preferences. For instance, we tend to use a lot of WhatsApp, but maybe in some countries it's not as uh, as used. So just opening different channels, I think, would be uh, helpful. And now looking outwards to the communication from the steering committee to the wider YWPs. Uh, I believe that's kind of our job as steering committee to, to be highlighting what we're doing and asking for opinions. But let's remember that communication is a two-way street. So it's not only talking, it's also listening. So I think that would be my main focus to try and gather all the different perspectives and the different worries that the YWPs have around the, the world. Of course, someone from one country might not have the same uh, priorities as another, but the point is to make sure that everybody's heard. So I think that would be my, my main goal in this role. And um, why I decided to, to apply for the secretary role it's actually because of Ines, our current secretary. I think she's doing an amazing job. And I've seen how much impact she was able to make, especially even with me. <laughs> so I would strive to, to do something similar. And that's one of the reasons. And the other is uh, I started to get more involved with the uh, Global Youth Movement for Water through the YWPs with the United Nations and all of that. And I still see that we kind of lack coordination in the different regions. So I would love to to be a helping hand there and try to, of course, I, I'm partial to Latin America <laughs> because of my background. But yeah, I, I think we can learn so much from each other. And we as youth have the advantage of being better able to communicate without as many prejudice and as many barriers as senior and more senior professionals. So I think that's kind of our advantage and what we bring to the table. But I would like to see that more highlighted in the in the global space. And uh, the opportunities that I feel young people would have I think it kind of relates to the challenges as well. As one of the vice chair candidates said, now interdisciplinarity is a very main focus of everything. You need to know a little bit about everything, but I feel we are, we're prepared for that. So I think that would be a great advantage, uh, the ability to know a little bit about uh, technology, a little bit about uh, biology or whatever is needed in the different roles. I think that's uh, a big advantage we have and also the ability to learn on the fly because that's in the end what, what will end up happening. And well, climate change is always going to be a, a, an important aspect as well. Uh, I see the time is up.
but I hope to continue the conversation on LinkedIn or anywhere else. Thank you, Claudia. Um, Shors? Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Yes, so my name is Jose Dubanza. Yes, so the name is Jose, but I think everyone here says us. It's Jose, Jose Dubanza. Um, I'm from Ghana, and I work with the Ghana Water Limited. I'm an electrical engineer by profession. And yeah, I'm responsible for making sure certain water systems in the water region of Ghana are kept running daily to provide water for the, our customers. In addition to that, I volunteer with Water Advancement Center as an operations officer, where we focus on um, rural water supply and sanitation. So my passion for water actually stems from my personal experiences growing up where water challenges were things we face on the regular and how it impacted my life growing up. So this this is my drive to be interested in water and to see the water sector grow and then achieve the LPG six. Yes. So what I um for well, one of the best networks I've joined. Um, because it has contributed so much to my personal and, and career growth as well. I've participated in congresses where I get sessions, appeared, volunteered, associated the Ghana chapter in Hackathon, um, as well as participating in, in other workshops. And last year during the Congress in conference in Kigali, I was privileged to be a part of the organizing committee for the Emerging Water Leaders Forum. Yes, so, and I had a chance to work with very amazing professionals, maybe I'll call them senior professionals, for lack of better words, where I learned a lot from there, from Jacob, Isabella, and the whole team, and I was really impacted and motivated to do more in the network. Yes, so for my role, um, regarding the question of how I would, the innovation strategy and how to ensure optimum productivity, I think effective communication is one of the I would say the principal role that needs to be achieved for us to um, achieve the goals of the steering committee. Because once there's effective communication, it's the possibility of achieving our goals are very high. And in my perspective, I believe uh, um, the current um, committee is doing a very great work. So I would just need to improve upon what they are doing, probably by diversifying the communication channels, really employing more real-time applications such as um, Slack or any other committee, uh, committee specific channels to hold discussions, to share files and then announcements, and also provide a, um, an avenue for real-time feedback as well. Uh, in addition to that, the meeting agenda is clearly defined with action items and deadlines with um, automated reminders just to make sure we are all up to task and then meeting our deadlines for progress to be made. And also, my vision basically is just to contribute to improving communication and then effective communication and collaboration among the committee members to achieve the set goals of the committee and also the IWA strategic plan. Yes. In my opinion, the topics that I would say would be most interesting to young professionals would be one would be the, the modern technology and digital solutions in water especially coming from um, the global South where we are still struggling or trying to catch up with the, um, the, the new innovations and trends. This would be a, a good area for a topic for us to be interested in. And I believe young people are the drivers of change when it comes to modern technology. So I believe this is a very important um, topic that should be of interest to young water professionals. And secondly, the nature-based solutions for tackling water challenges. I believe this is very important as well. Okay, and then there's a question of um, how I think the, um, the, com the steering committee should communicate with the YWC. And then, okay, so this is what I have to say about that. I believe the, the steering committee will have to work closely with the individual chapter leaders as well, because um, information will have to move from the steering committee to the chapters, and then the chapter leaders will have to communicate it down to the YWC. The same way, if the information goes down, information should come up as well. So it should be a, a two-way kind of communication. In that way, that will get more visibility to feel involved in whatever is going on in the network, and then there'll be more there'll be active participation. In addition, I think that yeah, the, the steering committee should actually host um, open forums 
periodically with um, YWPs worldwide just to receive feedback from them, engage with them, and also get to give the opportunity to the young water public now to know the steering committee members. Because that has helped me getting the uh, opportunity to know the steering committee members. Some of them have actually helped me to um, actively participate in the network. And um, I believe it's also important for us to employ um, the real-time tools such as the polls and then anonymous question and answers. You know, not everyone is able to speak up or give an opportunity, but when you have the opportunity to hide behind the camera or to type in the message, communication comes forth. So I believe you should employ such rules as well. Yeah. So all in all, I just want to contribute my quota and strengthen the YWC network, the steering committee, all the way down to the individual chapters. And yeah, that's all I have to say. And I'm thankful for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you for all the presentations. Now, let me share my screen. Now we are going to the Q&A. So please uh, feel free to post your questions in the chat or raise your hands here. So I will be doing the moderation and you can like speak um, and open, of course, your, your mic to this. We have received some questions during the registration uh, part. So uh, we will be also taking that into consideration if we don't have um, any questions from the participants here. So let me just stop sharing my screen so I can see everyone here. Hi. So do we have um, any questions for the candidates that are for chairs, vice chairs, uh, and secretary? Hi, Dr. Isabella. Can I have Hello. one question? Yes, Hi. please. Okay, hey everyone, I'm uh, Jason from China. So maybe I have one question for chair candidates. Uh, so Dr. Chelsea and Dr. I think as Tom. So my question is, what is the most important thing, important thing uh, you think and you can do in the next step for our YWP? So you can give some concrete ideas or strategies. So maybe that is what I'm very interested in. Yeah, I just one question. Okay, thank you. Um, Chelsea Ashton, who wants to go first? Ashton, I see their mic is open. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for the question. I think uh, you really are uh, putting us on the spotlight here. You know, in terms of strategy. Um. So yeah, we have developed a strategy. Uh, in this term, I think Chelsea was involved with that in terms of um setting up a mentorship. Uh, and I think she did allude to that uh, initially, you know, when she was introducing herself, that we were trying to really uh, kickstart the mentorship across the globe, where we, uh, you know, uh, pair young people with our seasoned professionals, you know, and, and enable them to be mentored so that they take over, you know, as we ask the question of the next five years. Um, secondly, I think uh, we had a strategy as well to try and motivate young people to get involved uh, uh, in the specialist groups so that they also get mentored. I mean, you're part of the specialist group, you are serving as a secretary or whatever role that you play. But in the next few years, we'd like to see you taking over, you know, as you are serving, you're being mentored, you are getting the skills, and soon enough, you'll be uh, taking over and, you know, becoming that seasoned professional. Uh, lastly, I think one thing that I've been sharing a lot on my end is that we need really to do a lot of work in the low income countries. You know, we really need to engage other stakeholders. I mean, I work with a lot of structures, you know, some of them, they come through Isabella, some of them through our own peers, you know, from our own networks. We need to really work alongside them, uh, World Youth uh, Parliament for Water, you know, all environmental groups, Crown Water Youth Network and, and so forth. There are a lot of rising smart water professionals. So these are a lot of organizations that I'm really involved in. Uh, some of them on the entrepreneurial side and some of them are, you know, youth chapters for governing bodies and, and so forth. So, we need to step out there and begin to be involved. I mean, uh, I have been uh, working across with a lot of structures. So it's not that we're competing, uh, but we should realize that IWS has got all the skill sets covering all the other centers, but these other groups are specialized, you know, on the sub 
uh, entities or substructures of the IWA, but it doesn't mean that you're complete in the space. We must look for opportunities for partnership and opportunities for collaboration. We have the UGS conference in the world when it comes to water. So you also need to leverage that and bring young people together, engage them, talk to them, and impact them to get involved within the YWP um, uh, IWA structures. So I think that's from my side. Uh, over to you, Chelsea. Thank you, Ashton. Um, I absolutely agree with everything that um, that Ashton said there, and as and and we have both been um, or are currently on that um, the YWP steering committee. So um, have there have certainly been discussions around um, YWP, YWP strategies. I think um, for me in particular, it's it's looking at initiatives that are going to help. Um, I guess break down some of the unconscious biases around um, young water professionals and the contributions that they can make to the water sector um, and and yeah and raising and raising the profile um, so that is looking at ways that we can connect young professionals more um, with the more experienced professionals in the sector um, so so like Ashton mentioned we we have been looking at a mentoring program um, and also around um, getting more wider VPs involved in the specialist groups as well I think in addition to that um, it's also looking at opportunities um, to get more wider VPs involved in other IWA events as well um, so like I said, it's, it's great that we have these events that are by YWPs for YWPs, but um, I think we also need to see that broader engagement in other um, water sector events. So, so looking at the potential for, for creating some requirements around including YWPs in, in organising committees and as speakers at events. Um, and the other one that I um, touched on as well was... Um, raising awareness of YWPs um, within governing members as well um, and, and exploring opportunities for YWP chapters to be part of forming um, governing members, which has happened um, in the past. So I think that there's absolutely opportunities for, for the community to kind of share those lessons learned through those experiences and, and have a look at how we can really start to in, um, further embed YWPs kind of in all areas of the IWA community. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Chatham. Um, do you have any other questions? Maybe we can have one question for the vice chairs and the secretaries, candidates. Guys, don't, pre don't feel shy. You can post them in the chat and then I, I, I can read it. So while you are thinking about the questions, I we can go to the ones that uh, to some of the ones that we received uh, during the registration on this, and maybe we can go for the uh, vice chair on this. So for the candidates of vice chairs, um, any actions to activate uh, the young water professionals to join um, in IWA programs, events, and, and other uh, activities and for them like to make a good contribution for the water sector? Um, maybe, Albert, do you wanna go? I can type here in the chat, so you're all aware of it. Yes, Isabella, thank you. So regarding the question, uh, I think that encouraging young people to participate in uh, IWA events and contribute to the water sector, we need to think in maybe in another way. Uh, from my experience latest, uh, I saw that if we engage two or three young water professionals group, we have too many projects, too many ideas that maybe we can apply for grants, we can apply for some funding opportunities, not only to EVA, but only, uh, also to other organizations that are uh, supporting the young people. Uh, the other thing that is maybe is mentor, mentorship programs. We need to establish mentorship programs, uh, pairing experienced professionals with young water people. Uh, so mentors can provide guidance, advice, and support to help young water professionals. The most important... Hi, Albert. I think that we lost you for a bit. Really? I'm sorry. Yeah, because... no, that's okay. I think that it was a problem with the connection. Please go okay. on. Okay. Uh, based 
uh, what what, uh, what I think is that uh, if we uh, make the experience of the seniors and the knowledge in technologies and innovation of the young people, uh, we can make or we can make a better product for uh, young water professionals and a better sector water sector in the region and the broader world. Thank you, Albert. Uh, Natalie? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, I just think it's really important for sort of the wider IWA outside of the young water professionals to have young water professionals front of mind. So I think just having someone in conversation when these events are going ahead, uh, ahead just to remind them that, that that we exist sometimes because there can be some really small changes to events that will really massively encourage young people to go along to events so one thing might be offering a discount for students or apprentices something like that um another thing might be um one thing that's really helpful that i think the iwa world congress is particularly good at is um like a draft form with ideas on how you can convince your manager on why you should attend that event or attend that conference. I think if you're more senior and you're really used to justifying going to events and that's something that kind of rolls off the tongue a little bit. So for them to jot down in a in just bullet point form a few ideas as to how to convince your manager why you should be going to that event will be quite easy for them. But I think when you're early, early on in your career, that can be quite difficult to, to try and think about or articulate some of those reasons. Um, so I think, yeah, just having a just having someone remind them that this group of people exists is really helpful. And then sometimes they can tailor that event for you a little bit. I know a lot of events that are in person, they need people who are sort of like helpers on the day, people who like hand out microphones or walk around the event. The young water professionals can can do that quite easily and that can sort of justify cheaper events, cheaper rates for them at the conference because they're sort of volunteering. Um, so there's lots of ways in which young water professionals can be contributing towards events. I think it's just reminding um, wider IWA that we exist and we can help out with some of those things. I think having us along at some meetings and things can really, really help do that. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, Natasha? Okay, I think there's three ways that we can we can take action to activate uh, YWP's participation in our events. One is to get them connected, right? So connecting them to country chapters, if they're not country chapters in particular regions, um, promoting and encouraging the, the establishment of country chapters because young water professionals will not hear about these events if they are not connected to these country chapters. But two is, um, empowering them so professional development through webinars um encouraging participation of the specialized groups um i think i think that's important but three is addressing the issue of funding um i think a lot of young water professional professionals are unable to attend a lot of events because of funding so if funding can't always come from IWA, I think equipping young water professionals to apply for to write proposals uh, grant proposals uh, mapping out stakeholders that they can approach um, in order to obtain funding, because I think funding is, is a major challenge within country chapters, but also for the YWPs themselves to just finance their own um, participation at all of these events. So I think those are the three, those are the three um, actions that I, I, would, I, would, I would propose. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, Chelsea? Yeah, so I think um, absolutely agree what um, all our other candidates have said there. Um, I think it's kind of two things. Uh, one is that that raising awareness of the events amongst the YWP communities. So like Natasha said, connecting YWPs and, um, and yet just making sure that they are aware of what is going on within the IWA community and the broader water sector. Um, and also um, in doing that, connecting with the um, YWP community and finding out um, what sort of events and, and initiatives they're actually interested in, in participating in. And I think that's definitely one of the key roles of the YWP steering committee is um, like we will be representing um, like a very diverse um, range of countries and, and regions. So. Um, the role of the committee is to to kind of find out what YWPs in their regions 
um, want and need and kind of bring that back um, to towards driving the different um, events and initiatives that they deliver. Um, and then I think the other part of it, um, and again, it has been um, mentioned by others, is um, looking at ways to break down some of those barriers that are preventing um, participation. So um, there's been talk about funding and things, but I think even um, even at the like a, at a pretty simple level, again, looking at um, the timing of events and kind of making sure that it um, that we have diversity in that and that we have opportunities for YWPs from different regions to to be able to participate in events at a reasonable hour um, and also um, and also things like potentially looking um, exploring opportunities to to run some events in different languages and things like that as well. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, we received a question in the group, um, the chat group from Anik. So Anik, I will read it for everyone. So um, I believe all the Apex, Apex positions are important and I pose a question to all of the positions. So chairs, vice chairs and secretary. How are you planning to target young water professionals from uh, low and middle income countries, given lingual uh, language barriers, uh, technical limitations, scarce resources, and membership challenges? So maybe we can start with Shorsh as the secretary. So Albert. I'm happy. I'm yeah. happy to jump okay. in. I feel like I've been talking a lot, um, <laughs> but I, I think um, to a next question and I, I mean he's speaking to a specific region but again I think um I think we need to broadly consider like all of the regions involved with IWA but but making sure that we we are aware that there are underrepresented um groups and, and regions um within the membership base um and the wider water community so looking at ways um to to make sure that we're engaging them as well and it is good to hear from from someone from that region on what some of those barriers are. So I think that's that's part of what we need to do is to actually um, listen and find out what what the challenges and barriers are to engaging YWPs in those regions. Um, so again, I feel like I'm starting to repeat myself a bit, but um, but yeah, I think there is potential opportunities to look at at running events um, in different languages, and it, and we and it has been done before. Um, and and looking at events that are targeted at certain regions, and perhaps um, if it is um, if it is specific to a region with um, with a primary language that's dif different to English, we can look to host that event um, in that language. Um, when it comes to technical limitations, and I mean you can see on the call today, we've had people with connection issues and things like that. Um, so again. I mean, top of mind for me is um, is thinking about um, ways such as recording the events for people to to catch up on later if they're if they're not able to to join at the time. Um, and and yeah, I think it's it's been raised before around um, fun, potential funding and things like that, um, which I think is a is something that we can definitely discuss and and work towards looking at potential scholarships or or supporting young professionals to to write. Um, grant proposals and things like that so that they can find funding from other sources as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, Natalie or Natasha? I was going to say um, pretty much what Chelsea's just... Oh, sorry, Natasha, did you want to go first? You can, you can go. Sorry. I was going to say pretty much what Chelsea just said in that. Um, I think for me, I've not got very good awareness sometimes of some of the difficulties faced by other chapters. Um, so I think the first stage for me is just about communication from each of the different chapters, getting an understanding of what their specific challenges are, um, whether they are sort of like technical challenges and that sort of thing, or I don't know, it can be more, it could be things like uh, barriers I've never even thought of before. Um, and they'll all vary. Every single different chapter will have different different challenges and, and issues within that chapter. Um and then I think just making sure that you're being um, inclusive in what you're doing. So, for instance, having visibility of the different countries and the different time zones in different countries to try and accommodate for that. Um, and, yeah, for the technical difficulties, I was just going to say what Chelsea said about sort of recording things, making the, the videos available. Um, I, there was definitely like a call that I joined that 
was beginning at like three o'clock in the morning or something like that. Um, I think also having a thing where it puts it in your calendar, the meeting in your calendar straight away, uh, instead of you having to put it in yourself, because I don't know about you, but I get mixed up by the time zones very easily and then put the put it in my calendar at the wrong time. Um, so yeah, I think first step, communication. Um, second step, acting on what you've learned through that communication. And third step, just making sure that things are inclusive for everyone. Thank you, Natalie. Um, Natasha? Yes, I just want to start, start off by saying that's a very good question um, and great contributions from, from Chelsea and, and Natalie. I think as a YWP in a low, mid, low to middle income country, these are the challenges that we are facing. Um, first of all, technical limitations. I think that as a country chapter, we have been very aware that this is... Um, not everyone might have access to technology. And so in all our programs, um, be it trying to sign up for membership, um, there will always be a technical component, but also um, always ensuring that you are taking care of, of, of those who might not be able to access technology. So what does that mean? It might mean that we print out actual physical copies um, so members can fill in if they want to be a part of the chapter. Um, Language barrier. Uh, I think that even as we um, engage in, for example, webinars or all of these things, we really do try to, one, bring on speakers who, um, Zambian speakers who are able to um, interact with both crowds. But if, if, if our speakers are not, um, we do ensure that we are able to, um, in a way, translate or just go over um what what is being said so that everyone can be able to to benefit and um membership challenges this is this is such a big issue uh one with regards to the fees um and just having people uh, buy into the benefits of being a part of the country chapter being a part of Iowa um so so this is this has been a huge struggle for us but i think that the first step as i always keep mentioning is to get people connected get people into the country chapters um from there they'll be they'll be exposed to the various benefits various opportunities and with time then sign up to even be part of this this bigger uh, iwa network so as a country chapter i think we have been very intentional about not overpricing our membership contributions this is just to facilitate day-to-day -day administrative tasks um, so that we are able to attract even those who might not be able to um pay a huge fee so these are the challenges and i'm, I'm so glad that um that this question has been raised and scarce resources i think also just um having initiatives that don't require a very huge budget um especially for chapters like zambia that is starting out we can't also have can't host a conference um currently so we start with okay what can we do with what we have um can we host webinars can we have in-person meeting can we organize networking um events so that young people um, young water professionals can still be part of what and benefit from the benefits of being a part of the country chapter without um, necessarily having a huge cost attached to it. So we really have to constantly be thinking outside the box to ensure that we are accommodating um, the, the young water professionals in our region. Thank you, Natasha. Um, Albert? Uh, yes, Isabella. Thank you. I'm sorry that I can I cannot turn on camera because I'm in the car and I'm traveling. Uh, actually, we were talking about the challenges that young water professionals have. For my opinion, uh, as a steering committee, we need to arrange meetings with all, maybe with most of the young water professionals group, in order in order to know the challenges what they have, because I'm sure that challenges are not the same in each chapters. So after that, we can have a better view how to manage the challenges that, uh, that they have. If, for example, in my country, we have a limited resource about the uh, GIS experts. So in the IWA chapters, Young Water Professional chapters, we can see that, for example, a chapter from uh, Zambia has a good uh, knowledge about the GIS. So we, we can create a training, a workshop or something like that in order to train some young water professionals around the world. At the end, we know that this is a volunteer group and we will do the better for to have a better management of in water sector. 
according to the language barriers i think that with this one we we need to work with regions so we need to get people for a region the same language what they have we need to work on them and we need to create workshops and uh, other webinars for for young water professionals thank you albert as we are we only have one time i would like just to sorry <laughs> first thank you for all, all of you coming i just have some uh, final remarks that i want to go over so we can conclude this meeting here so let me share my screen here perfect so um as i was saying thank you for everyone for coming for uh, especially for the candidates that are running for the management committee of the water place steering committee so the candidates for chair vice chairs and the secretary and also for the other candidates that were able to join and take part in this um, online engagement this um this meeting was recorded and i will try to post it as soon as possible on our platform so all the ywp uh, members they can access it with that being said um i would like to first like present uh, the program committee of the emerging water leaders forum you can see the photo of all of them here and if you are planning to go and attend the world water congress in toronto these are some of the activities that we have planned for young water professionals and in case you are attending uh, you are attending in person and you want to contribute as a volunteer we have some rapporteurs uh, positions for the emerging water leaders forum so just let me know and feel free to, to re reach out to me by email so we can uh, keep in touch on this. With that being said, please remember to vote for this. The, um, uh, the voting will be until uh, the 1st of May and everything is online. And in case you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And thank you, everyone. I hope that you enjoy it. And I'm quite excited for uh, welcoming the new committee in August.